Today on Expert Showcase, Mark Mawini talking about building a successful coaching business. Well, Mark Mawini, welcome to Expert Showcase. It's the Mark and Mark show today. So uh, we're talking about building a successful coaching business. Give me a quick uh, overview of what we're going to cover in today's episode. Thanks for having me on the show, Mark. It's uh, it's a treat to talk to a Mark with a C, um, right. especially one in, in the States. I'm in Canada. Common with uh, the French well, here. But... It's the correct spelling. You know, everyone else, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you've probably seen the Starbucks uh, joke too. With uh, when someone asked, uh, they, they said, "What's your name?" They said, "Mark with a C," and they spelled it uh, it was C R A R C R A K R K. You know, and uh, that hasn't happened to me in uh, yet in Starbucks. Knock on wood. But um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on the show, Mark. Uh, basically, like you mentioned, I I um, work with coaches. You know, so I coach coaches and yep. uh, having a lot of fun doing it. It's my passion uh, is really helping coaches build stronger businesses, and I do that a number of ways. A, a big uh, chunk of my time is spent with my podcast, Natural Born Coaches, and reaching a lot of uh, coaches out there, and I think we're doing some good, so I'm having a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, and as we were prepping for the show, we, we talked about the fact that we're going we're gonna to spend a few minutes focusing on three main takeaways for the coaches who are watching and listening. So we're going to talk about choosing the right niche. Then we're going to talk about effective time management strategies. Then we're going to talk about jumping on opportunities when they arise. So let's take those from the top, uh, Mark. Let's go with choosing the right niche. When you're working with coaches, when you're trying to get them to really build their business, uh, what, do you, what do you advise them? How do you get them to choose the right niche? Well, that's um, a point that really has a, a real personal meaning to me because when I became a coach, I made that mistake that most coaches make, and I jumped out there without it. Uh, we say niche in Canada. Oh, I'll okay. have to. It'll screw me off if I try to say niche. You know, the American stuff. We. I made the mistake. Okay, we'll, we'll put subtitles when you speak Canadian. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to sound snotty or anything. Say niche. You know, niche, niche. It's all the same. You know, but uh, tomato, tomato. Um, but every, almost every coach or a large majority coaches make the mistake of not choosing that right niche when they uh, become coaches and I made the exact same mistake so when I became a coach I, I said hey I'm gonna be a business coach you know because that's what my background was as an entrepreneur for years and in the real estate field and everything and I thought I'd like to work with entrepreneurs and uh, so I'll be a business coach you know and I got the website done up and the fancy cards and you know all that other stuff and waited for people to beat a path to my door and it never happened you know you had the mm -hmm. tumbleweeds flying by and <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it took a few months to kind of uh, get into my head that, hey, maybe there's another way to do it. And uh, I went through, um, you know, with my process of examining my business and doing things like a mind map, you know, I guess there's not a lot of time to go into those things today, but a mind mapping exercise and other things, I determined that I really enjoyed working with coaches. I had a couple mm -hmm. clients who were coaches, and I said, okay, I'm going to focus more on just dealing just with coaches. and. Um, sp more specifically, newer coaches or who I tend to work with, as opposed to say Joe the plumber or Mike the accountant or the, the other business owners that are out there. So I, I really think it's important that coaches have to choose some sort of niche to narrow it down because it's just way too hard to get heard out there and try exactly. to be found and get your head above the crowd if you don't have one. Absolutely. I mean, that, we we share the same focus in, on that one. And it's a real learning curve, right, for all of us. I mean, because you think you're being narrow enough the World Wide Web and you realize you can pick a fairly, what you think is a fairly obscure niche, I'll, I'll speak Canadian, and yeah. uh, and there's like 10, 10 million websites, I mean, so you've got to really yeah. focus, right? If you yeah, and the logic the sounded niche. good, you know, I thought there's how many hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs in the right. world, you know, that's uh, that makes sense, you know, you're casting as wide net as possible, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. Now that being said, you could take it to the other extreme, you don't want to say, Hey, I'm going to uh, work with left-handed dentists from Idaho who are recently divorced and are in the process of selling their business. Exactly. The, the, the five months. people in your audience. Yeah, uh, you know, you're not, not, 
not to insult the left-handed dentist from Idaho going through the divorce, but um, I, the odds are there probably isn't one like that. Then suddenly that's, there's a saying that you niche until it hurts, but you can go too far when, you, when it's going to hurt too much. So you have to choose that sweet spot where it's a nice tight niche, but not so tight like that. Kind of, I know that's a silly example, but yeah, I think well, no, but, it. but it's an excellent point. Uh, yeah. But you know, that, that's people's fear, right? Is that by, by, you know, focusing on, on a niche that they're going to essentially, oh my God, I'm too narrow. And, and people tend to err in that direction that they are still nowhere close narrow yeah. enough. Well, everyone looks at Tony Robbins and other ones and they want to impact 7 billion people in the world. Right. And they think if I'm dealing with a specific niche, I'm not going to be able to do that. Well, there's always that option to expand your niche as time goes on down the road. And a perfect example is Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, when mm -hmm. he got started with Wine Library TV, mm -hmm. it was very specific wine videos on the internet, which now is more common. But back when he was doing it right. 10, almost 10 years ago, it wasn't a big thing. And then once he got traction in that niche, then he wrote Crush It, of course, and you know, started talking about uh, general social media and marketing and how people could incorporate their stories into social media. And then he started speaking to a wider, uh, broader audience, but he would have never been able to do that if he hadn't had that success first in a tight niche. Well, obviously, we're going to have to segue to your next bullet point because, you know, we, we need to do I some talk management. All day about we can talk. Things. Listen, we, the yeah. Mark and Mark show could go on for the next five hours just mm -hmm. about, you know, niching and focusing and, and being narrow. But uh, we, we've got to manage our time or, and move on. So let's talk about uh, the, the next piece here, which is effective time management. Um, why is that critical for coaches to really pay attention to? A lot of my focus here this year actually is on time management and productivity because my whole life I've been I'm the type of guy I'll I'll generally bite off uh, more than I can chew you know and I um and that ends up me working you know up at five a.m. and working until one in the morning you know and then I, I know hours. nothing about that I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about man. I'm sure you get eight or nine hours beauty rest every night you know yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you're watching Jerry Springer through the day, and you get you know 20 minutes of work done. That's right. Um, the, the, these rings under my eyes, I, they're 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 just for show. <laughs> yeah. So the the problem um, I have is I had to get a better handle on it this year, and it's uh, I'm a big reader, and what ended up happening is I started reading some books that talk specifically about getting a better handle on your time and productivity, and they really opened my eyes. And the two ones uh, that in particular that stand out are the one thing with Gary Keller, which you've probably seen that one. And then there's uh, Essentialism with uh, Greg uh, McEwen, and uh, that's an excellent book as well. And what it made me realize was by trying to take on everything and thinking I'm being more productive, I'm actually being less productive because I'm not at 100% for everything. So instead of having 100 things you're focusing on, focus on that one thing or you know narrow that down and really put all your attention on that. And it means saying no. Like I've started saying no to a lot of things I normally would have taken on because you hate to say no to people you want to help out. But if not, you're not doing yourself any favor by loading your plate up. Right. So I've got a really specific uh, productivity strategy that I use and because people say, how are you able to do a daily podcast, which is you know a lot of work with between that. I do a lot of the editing and show notes and promotion and everything else. I sweep the floors and you know the cash register and wash the windows and it's metaphorically speaking. So um, I do everything or most things for the podcast and then also uh, run a busy coaching business. So it's a question, how do you juggle those things? And That's right. I've gotten better at it now. It's been a constant tweaking and, and uh, working through the process and it's getting much better. Now I still have a ways to go. I think I could probably say no a lot more and I could tighten it in even more, but it's getting there. Excellent. Well, yeah. And so you've you've really paved the way by using yourself as the template. And now you've worked out the systems that you can teach yeah. other coaches so that they can shorten that learning curve. That's excellent well, stuff. I'm the, gu the guinea pig. And I, don't guinea think pig. I, I don't think I'll ever have a Tim Ferriss four-hour work week. And I don't think I want to have a four-hour work well, week. I would go nuts the other 164 hours. But the, the, I'm the trying to get there. The secret is that Tim Ferriss' four-hour work week, he, he you know, pa basically packs about 80 hours into every day for people who actually know Tim Ferriss. I don't think yeah. he's anywhere close to a four-hour work week. It's a great concept, though. Love yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so let's segue then to uh, your third point, which is you know, coaches need to really jump on the opportunities. Um, what, what are we talking about here? Well, um, I guess something just happened a couple of weeks ago, which which illustrates how important it is to jump in opportunities. Um, I find as a coach, if something presents itself that's a good opportunity, let's say for example, me getting on this show. You know, I spoke with uh, with you and with Chris Sprague, and I'm like, great, I'd love to be on the show, and I booked it right away. 
you know um, a lot of people wait and say okay I'll do that I'm busy I'll do it tomorrow and it gets pushed off and gets pushed off and then you lose the opportunity I'm in the process with natural born coaches we're about to air our hundredth episode as we're recording this now Congratulations. and uh, separate yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's, um, you know, looking forward now to number 1,000, but we'll take them one at a time. Um, and uh, I asked a, a coach several months ago if he'd be interested in coming on the show as the 100th episode guest, which I think is a good opportunity. It's not exactly, you know, being on Oprah or anything like that, but it's, you know, I'm going to be promoting that heavily and, and we've got a lot more buzz than the usual show. And uh, the coach uh, basically first didn't get back to me. Then a couple days later said, yeah, I'll check out your stuff. And then, you know, don't hear from him for weeks or whatever. So finally I had an opportunity to get uh, the awesome David Ralph from Join Up Dots. Uh, I've been on David's show. He's a popular podcaster in the UK and great guy. And uh, I, I was interviewed at his show and I said, it just kind of hit me, David, would you, would you like to come on my show? I'd love to have you as a, a guest number 100. And right away he said, sure thing, Mark. Well, we were off uh, Skype. We were probably off Skype for a minute, and I checked my email, and uh, my online calendar shows that I have a booking from who? David Ralph. You know, he just hopped right off there and booked it. And so the uh, the moral, uh, the moral the original coach got back to me like a day or two later and said, great, I want to book it. What's that link again, you know, or whatever. And I said, <laughs> I said I'm sorry. You're, you're not getting the 100th slot anymore, so. Well, no, you're not, you know, and um, it, it's just an example of um, hit that, a small example of how if you don't jump on opportunities, take care of it, then think you're going to miss out, miss a boat on it. So I can usually tell even with uh, coaches I'm working with, which coaches are the most keen or are going to do the best with my coaching, because when we're trying to book our original strategy session, if they say, well, let's, you know, make it three or four weeks down the road, I'm working on the kitchen, we're doing renovations, and <laughs> You know, we're going away next weekend, you know, and they kind of ho-hum uh, ho and not really in a big rush, then uh, generally that's not going to be as good of a client as the one that right away rushes into your online calendar, gets a book, they're keen, they're ready to go, and they want to get started. So you, you, you have to jump on those um, opportunities, and, and this I, I hope this isn't harsh. I, I say because this was always said when I was a kid, so, you know, bleep it out if you have to, but there's a <laughs> saying you have to be like, um, you know, jump on it like a fat kid on a smarty, you know, and I've always <laughs> remembered that one. And, and I think it's true. You got to jump on those opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my version of that is just that, you know, opportunity is a door to door salesman. And if you don't open the door, your neighbor is going to get the knock on the door. So uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never know where an opportunity could lead. You know, had Chris not booked on my show to be interviewed on natural born coaches, I wouldn't be here today. And, you know, we wouldn't be doing this and God knows what we'll be doing down the road. So. That's right. Well, yeah, Mark, it has been excellent to have you on the show. This is this is great stuff for coaches to really pay attention to. We've been talking to Mawini here about building a successful coaching business. And just to recap, we've been focusing on three main things, choosing the right niche, effective time management strategies, and then, yes, absolutely, jumping on the opportunities when they knock and not missing out. You know, you, somebody, somebody listening to this right now could have been your 100th episode and they, they missed out. So... Um, Mark, I know you've got an awesome website. You've mentioned your podcast. Uh, you know, people should definitely be listening to that. Uh, people should go to naturalbornCoaches.com and connect with you. And I know you've got a, uh, a webinar in the works as well, right? I do. I, um, you know, I, that's an example where I didn't jump on an opportunity. I've been so busy late 2014 with getting the podcast rolling that I didn't do the webinars because of I, I realized I had to focus on that, but I'm now I'm hopping on the, the webinar uh, wagon, and um, I've got a, a webinar that's starting uh, the next couple weeks from uh, from now, and uh, looking forward to it. It's going to actually focus on a lot of what we talked about today with the importance cool. of, of niching, and it's going to be walking people through the process of how I niche and how I help clients uh, to choose a coaching niche and everything else. So what I'm doing, and you've probably been on these webinars, I'm, I, I hate the webinars that are like 60 minutes of sales pitch, just uh -huh. sell, 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 just drives me nuts. I've packed as much value as I can into that 60 minutes. I want people to walk away with that to get that good free info and, and not be just an infomercial. So I think we've achieved that balance and we're just about ready to launch. Excellent. Well, there you have it. So Mark Mawini, you want to connect with him at naturalborncoaches.com. If you get connected there, you're not going to miss out on the launch of his webinar series, but you also want to get connected to his podcast show. Mark, it has been great having you on Expert Showcase. I look forward to speaking with you again and uh, building a long-term relationship. This sounds awesome. Thanks, Mark. And another great Expert Showcase episode. Chris, what should people do right now? 
Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a, a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to ExpertShowcase.com, click on the big yellow Apply button, and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now, if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out check our packages out and get in contact with us let's see if we're a good fit and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show and until next time uh mark anything else i couldn't have said it any better so i uh, just do what he said